Election Day. And I believe it's the responsibility of every Christian to fulfill their civil responsibility by voting. In the last election, only 40% of Christians voted. And look where we are because of it. We need Christians who will vote and vote biblically. I didn't say party. I said biblically. Vote for people who support our values and will work in Congress, in the Senate, uh, in government, local, and state who will support our values. It's your responsibility. Vote. Be informed and vote. We continue in our series, which is going to end in just a couple of weeks, and then we're going to start something different the 1st of January. We're continuing our series, The Commandments of the Lord. One that's very, very important. It's very interesting. Uh, This morning in my devotions, this is exactly what I was reading about. Just one of those sovereign things where God reinforces in my mind the issue of honoring our parents. Uh, I have talked about this on several different occasions, and I'm going to take a different bent and approach on it today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 1 through 9. Let's read this together in respect for God's Word. Let's stand. Matthew 15, 1 through 9. Then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded you, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God, then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. The Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. I guess you heard about the little girl who came to her mommy and says, Mommy, if Santa Claus brings gifts and Uncle Sam gives Social Security and God gives our daily bread, why don't we keep Dad around? (laughs) Or or did you hear about the 16-year-old boy who wanted to drive the car and he came to his dad and says, Dad... Uh, I'm 16, I'd like to drive the car. And dad said, there are three conditions for you to drive the car. You have to show responsibility. Number one, you have to get good grades in school. Number two, you have to read your Bible daily. And number three, your hair is scraggly and I want you to get a haircut. Well, the boy thought about it and He finally came to his dad and says, Dad, I've been working hard on my grades. Here's my report cards. They're all A's and B's. And dad says, well, you're one-third of the way there. He says, "Uh, are you reading your Bible daily? He says, yes, Dad, I'm being faithful and reading my Bible daily. He says, you're two-thirds of the way there. But your hair still hasn't been cut. And the boy trying to get around says, but Dad, you understand, Jesus had long hair. And dad says, Yeah, and Jesus walked everywhere, too. (laughs) There's an issue of respect that should be administered by children to their parents. This is called honor. It's respecting the authority, and it's usually forged through one's relationship with their parents. Understand this. The way one treats their parents is the way one normally treats God, and vice versa. If you treat your parents with disrespect, it generally means 
you treat God with respect. And if you don't treat your parents with respect, you normally don't treat God with respect. In the 1960s, there, there occurred this thing. I was alive then, I will admit. Where there was a revolution against parents. Parents didn't know nothing. And the rebellion of authority against it. And as a result, we're reaping the consequences of it. A wise man once said, The prosperity and well-being of a nation depends upon the reverence of children towards their parents. Parents represent God in the first aspect and understanding. And the way a child treats their parents is the way they generally treat God. If you have no fear of God, it means you have no fear of parents. Our parents are the first authority figures in our life, and God is our ultimate authority. We learn about authority from our parents. D.L. Moody said, I wouldn't give a snap of my finger for a religion that doesn't give, doesn't begin at home and doesn't regulate conduct towards parents. Today, what we want to do is look at this issue of honoring parents as illustrated and demonstrated by Jesus in Matthew 15. Let, let's look at the context. The context of Matthew 15 is the Pharisees had come to challenge Jesus. Now notice, it wasn't the local Pharisees. These are the ones from Jerusalem. They had more authority, more of everything associated with them. And so they were the higher critics, if you will. And, and they raised questions to, to look at Jesus. But they were afraid to challenge him, so they challenged his disciples' behavior. And what the disciples had done is something, oh, so hideous. As walking through the grain fields, they knocked off some grains and ate them. And they didn't wash their hands. Now, as a parent, you understand that. You're always supposed to wash your hands before you eat, right? That's not what it's talking about. You see, in the Jewish tradition... If you go back to the Mosaic Law, the priest had rather strict instructions concerning how to wash their hands in ceremonial cleansing. Well, what had happened over the years is the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers, what they had done is applied that not to the priest, but to every person throughout their life. And that before you ate, you were supposed to go through the ceremonial cleansing associated with it. And the disciples had violated these applications. Only we didn't call them applications. The Bible calls them traditions. The traditions of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Uh, by so doing, it challenged the authority of the Pharisees and Sadducees to make decisions and applications in regard. And so they challenged Jesus, why do your disciples not wash their hands? Jesus would have none of it. And he responded in verses 3 through 6. And he challenged them with their own standards of conduct. He says, you have standards. You have traditions. You say, my disciples are violating God's law by not following your traditions. Well, I tell you this. Why are you following your traditions and in so doing violate the commandments of God? Turns it right back on them. In, in, in verse 4, he says, you know what Scripture says. Anyone who curses parents. Now, that, that's a very strong word uh, in the King James, New King James. The, the word is curse. Uh, that may be a little too strong for the Greek word that is there. It, it probably means insult, to not bring honor to. So it's not cursing out your parents. It's doing anything that would bring dishonor to them. And he emphasizes this. Now, Jesus had previously taught that commitment to him outweighs commitment to parents and family. But this is not what he's talking about. The relationship with God is most important, but the relationship with God is based on obedience to God. Doing what God wants, not what man wants. 
And so what he does, he turns to the Pharisees, and in verses 7 through 9, he calls them hypocrites. This is the, chronologically, I think this is the first time that we find a record in Scripture of him calling a hypocrite, a two-faced person, someone who says one thing and does exactly the opposite, someone who appears to be religious but is really very vile in, in nature. And, and what he does is Jesus quotes Isaiah. He says, this people honors me with their mouth, but their heart... It's nowhere near God. In other words, they had an outward appearance of religiosity, but inwardly they were far from God. They said they were obeying God, but they weren't obeying God. You look at the, the principle. The principle behind what Jesus is saying is that obedience takes precedence over tradition. And what happens is man's traditions nullify the Word of God. And what happened, even though Moses says, don't add to, don't take away from my word, every time the Pharisees would add something, what were they doing? They were adding to the Word. Every time they said, oh, you don't have to do this for your parents, they are nullifying, taking away from the Word of God. And what they had done is this. Now, I'm going to put these in my terminology. They had applied the principle in their own method and way. And application took precedence over interpretation. The meaning was of no effect. What was important is the application. Now, you say, boy, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, yes, it does. Do you know that we do the exact same thing? Uh, <clears throat> buckle your seatbelts. It's about to get heavy here. Does Scripture say, worship the Lord your God? Do you know what happens in our day and age? You can only worship God if you follow the King James Version. Uh, or maybe it's the New American Version. I, I don't know which one's your favorite, but you, you can only worship God and you got to have that version. You can only worship God if you use hymns. They have to be old ones too. They can't be anything new. I, I don't know how they sung those hymns when they were first written, if you have to sing, sing things that are old. You can only worship God if you have a suit and coat on. It's not worship. If you raise your hands, oh, you're getting too carried away. You can't worship that way. What have we done with all those little things? We've made our applications of the word more important than God's concept principle, which is to worship God. God. It's not about methodology. It's not about application. Personally, it's the spirit and inward attitude that we need to have in regard to these things. Tradition taught, the application of the Pharisees taught, you wash your hands before you eat. But in so doing, they miss the big picture, which is the principle of dedicating everything to God. And so what Jesus did is he talked about how the Pharisees themselves dishonored God, nullified the Word of God in their application concerning giving to God. The honor of parents fulfills the Word of God. You honor your parents because God promises those who honor their parents long life, and health. Blessing for doing that. But what the Pharisees had done is this. They had made a way around to disobey God. I believe Scripture teaches it's the responsibility of children to take care of their parents. Now, when they're older, I understand. And yet what had occurred is they didn't want to get rid of all their money. 
So if they dedicated their money to God, this money is dedicated forthwith and his forth forevermore to God. Therefore, you didn't have to give it to anybody, including your parents, because it's dedicated to God. And when your parents had need, you didn't have to help them. Thereby disobeying what God says is we are to honor them. It is our responsibility to honor our parents. It reminds me of the pastor who came in and walked in on his son who is back talking to mama. I mean, he was giving her some lip. And he walked over and he got a hold of the boy. And he set him down and he looked him square in the eye and says, Boy, there's three things you've just done wrong. Number one, you have dishonored your mother before God. You have sinned against God. Secondly, by dishonoring your mother, you have sinned against your mother. And third, you have sinned against my wife. And I will not tolerate anyone to dishonor my wife the way that you have. And you have three things you need to do. You need to confess your sin to God. You need to ask forgiveness from your mother. And you need to stand in discipline before me. Uh, guys, I think that's an honorable example of what we should teach our children to honor our parents. Honor is an issue of the heart. It's not about ceremony. It's, it's not about doing things this way or that way. It, it, it's what's going on inside here. Do you respect and build them up? This conversation that Jesus was having was with religious folk. The Pharisees, they were the most religious of the days, the most honored. But guess what? They missed it. They were focusing on the ceremony. That's what happens in so many churches in America today. We're so focused on the ceremony, whether it's three hymns of prayer and or whether you have 40 minutes or 35 minutes of a sermon or whether you how you look, that we miss the attitude of worship to God. We should be so focused on God that we can't see what's going on beside us because we're too busy worshiping ourselves. That it really doesn't matter what the next person does. It's the same way with honoring your parents. It's an issue of heart. And it's about a pure heart. We need to have pure hearts before God. A heart that displays honor in every aspect. Our parents should be held in esteem, respect, and honor, even if they don't deserve honor because of the way they treated us. C.S. Lewis wrote, Fatherhood must be at the core of the universe. Then this respect for a father means engaging in some very dangerous vandalism. Gordon Dalby said, We had better teach our sons mercy. A man who curses his father curses his own manhood. It is our responsibility to honor our parents with a pure heart. How do we do that? How do we honor our parents? How's my life going to be different? I've spoken on this in the past, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through it for those that have been here before. For others, uh, I could spend more time on it individually. I think the way that you honor your parents is dependent upon your age, how old you are. I think... If you are at the age of dependency upon your parents, how do you measure that? You live at home, you take their money, you eat their food. Uh, if without them, 
you couldn't survive, that's the age of dependency. It's not so much about how old you are, though I think from the age of zero to about, today it's 27. <laughs> Still living at home and, you know, all this other stuff. If you live at home and you take from your parents, you're dependent upon them. And I think the way you honor your parents during that time is you obey them. You do what they tell you to do. You honor them by hearing what they say and then making every effort to do it. Isn't that the way we honor God, by the way? And all of us are dependent upon God. We need to obey God. We honor Him by our obedience. You honor your parents when you are dependent upon Him, them, by doing what they say. Now, I'm not talking about doing things that are illegal, immoral. Y'all understand that? But if it's not in violation of Scripture, it is the child's responsibility to do everything their parents says. If your parent says, clean your room, and you don't clean your room, you have dishonored your parents, and you've dishonored God. If your parents say, go to bed at 10 o'clock, and you stay up to midnight, you have dishonored God, and you've dishonored your parents by disobedience. You've shown utter disrespect for their authority in your life, and established yourself as authority. And you wonder why you get in trouble with your teachers, because you don't respect teachers either if you don't respect your parents. It is the responsibility of a dependent child to honor their parents by their obedience. But what happens if you're independent from your parents? The age of independence. You've graduated, you live on your own, you're not depending upon them for financial support. I think you honor your parents by respecting your parents. What, what, what does respect mean? It means valuing them as a person. It means valuing their opinions. They've lived longer than you. They've been through more experiences than you. And therefore, you ask their opinions on matter. I didn't say you had to do what they said. I said what? You show them respect by involving them in your life and letting them have some input. You still have to make your own decision. But at least you show them respect by valuing their opinion. I, I think you also show them respect by valuing their persons. I, I think one of the things that I see so often when children eat, reach the age of independence is they abandon their parents unless they need something. The parents are just there in a corner somewhere. And if you ever need any help, oh, there's mom and dad. But the rest of the time, you ignore them. I think it's important when you reach the age of independence to show that your parents still are valuable. I think you need to call them or write them or show them that they're important as a person and, and you value time with them. I tell people I call my mother every day because I love her and I like spending time with her. She's special. No one that makes me do that is because I want to do that. But then there comes a time when our parents are unable to take care of themselves. It's the age of dependency on us. It is not the government's responsibility to take care of our parents. It's ours. It's only been in recent years that we've relegated the, the care of those who cannot take care of themselves to the government. God never intended that. It's our responsibility. I'm not saying parents should never be in a nursing home or anything like that. Y'all understand that? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying whose responsibility is it to make sure they're cared for and taken care of? It's ours. And we honor our parents by taking care of them. No parent wants their child to take care of them. No parent that I know of wants their children to spend money on them. But there comes a time where we may have to. And if we do, it's a delight. I've told my mom, 
Shar has told her mother that if they ever need anything, we will sacrifice whatever it takes to meet their needs. That's what God wants. Us to take care of them. Gang, they took care of us. They raised us. They supported us. They prayed for us. So we need to provide and care for them. Additionally, this is for all ages. At all times, we honor our parents by being a living memorial for them. When they look at us, they say, there goes so-and-so's child. Wow! He must, she must be a blessing to her parents because look at the honor they bring by living a life. I mean, our parents don't even have to be believers. And parents say, there's something different about them. They're a special child, even if you're 65 years old. And because of the way that we live... We bring honor and respect. And when they're gone, we're still bringing honor to them by living a life that brings honor to Jesus and living as a credit to humanity and to the parents that raised us. All of us learn by example. All of us. And we need to be careful I don't know if y'all have read Grimm's fairy tales. There, there's one that's kind of interesting. In, in one of Grimm's fairy tales, it talks about an old man who lived with his son, his son's wife, and their four-year-old child. And he was getting very elderly. And he ate with them at the table, but his hands shook from what we would call Parkinson's today. And sometimes, you know, food would get over the tablecloth and you know sometimes he wouldn't get it all in his mouth and so this upset the lady and son so much that they set aside his own table because he just messed things up and then it got so bad he, you know it was just so hard for him to get any food at all that they just built a pig trough for him put his food in the pig trough and let him eat out of it one day the parents came home and there was a four-year-old playing and they said, what are you doing, son? And he said, I'm building a trough so that when you get old, you can eat out of it. And the parents brought the dad back to the table. Honor your father and mother. You don't honor tradition. You don't honor application. You honor the principle. The principle that God demands that we honor our parents, that it may go well. By honoring our parents, we learn to honor our God. For if you cannot honor those that you see, how will you ever honor him who you don't see. Jesus commands, demands, honor your parents that it may go well with you and you live a long life. Would you join me in prayer?